Thanks uh, for inviting me to this uh, new edition of the uh, Understanding China conference in uh, Guangzhou. And uh, what I want to do uh, with you today is to share some of my uh, thoughts uh, about the challenges ahead of us, the risks facing uh, our world. And in order to do that, I'll build on what we discussed uh, last week at the uh, Paris uh, Peace Forum. So looking at the big picture, as I see it, our main challenge is uh, to overcome four main gaps. Uh, which uh, the COVID pandemic has unfortunately increased in our world. These gaps were there before the pandemic, but the pandemic for a variety of reasons has had a negative impact on all of these challenges which I believe uh, are now more difficult to address than they were, which will need more international cooperation and hopefully less divisions in this world in the future. Uh, these four gaps are in my view, the following ones. Uh, number one, uh, the vaccine gap. Number two, the digital gap. Number three, uh, the carbon gap. And number four, uh, the have versus have not gap. Starting uh, with the vaccine gap, uh, I think this is the most urgent. We have a contrast uh, between, uh, on the one side, the formidable achievement of finding vaccines in such a short time. Science has been incredibly good at achieving this result. And that was done transborder between scientists, innovators, businesses, health systems on the one side, and on the other side, uh, the very disappointing result of where we are uh, with this uh, incapacity to properly share the benefits of vaccination in this planet uh, with one part, which is properly vaccinated, let's say 60, 70% of the population, and then another part of the world uh, where not even health workers at this stage have been properly vaccinated. And this is not to be the case in Africa. So that's, in my view, the number one gap. We need to address it. Uh, otherwise, the recovery of the whole planet post pandemic uh, will be too slow. Second gap, which I have in mind, is the digital gap. Uh, we have, in my view, a double gap within countries and between countries, within countries, uh, between those who have the necessary skills to benefit uh, from the formidably rapid digital transformation of our production systems. And on the one side, those who, unfortunately, short of a proper education and training, uh, do not have this. The second gap, I think we have to look at and worry about is uh, the gap in digital regulation. Uh, if we do not address this issue, I think we are moving to a world of digitalization, uh, which will be fragmented uh, in uh, three bits, US, China, and probably Europe. And this stems mainly from divergences of views of how to regulate data, 
data privacy, data protection, data storage, data accessibility, these areas for the moment are handled in a very specific way by China, by US, by Europe. And I think we have to look more carefully at how we can collectively ensure uh, the resilience of digital infrastructure, the regulation of platforms, digital trade, and data regime, although I know this bounce into serious ideological differences. Third uh, gap, which I think uh, we have ahead of us is what I call the carbon gap. We all know that coping with climate change, and uh, we've been very slow collectively in doing this so far, as we know, coping with climate change implies a price of carbon higher than what we have so far, whether an explicit price or whether an implicit price. And on this, uh, what I see ahead of us is, again, a risk of fragmentation, not so much on the horizon of decarbonation, China 2060, uh, Europe, US, Japan 2050. This, in my view, is not the real problem. The real problem is that the trajectories to get there and the instruments that have to be used in terms of policy tools are for the moment different, heterogeneous. Is it a tax? Is it an emission trading system? Is it with technical standards? Is it with subsidies? China, US, EU have different views on this. And again, I think there is a risk if we do not coordinate better our approaches, notably on the trade side. Trading between countries that have different carbon prices, not small differences, but big differences, is a risk for open trade in this planet, notably uh, because of the uh, carbon uh, leakage. Uh, fourth and uh, last uh, risk I have in mind, and which I believe uh, COVID uh, has uh, enhanced, is this uh, have and uh, have not uh, mostly uh, within our countries, mostly. Uh, and I think this is a situation which uh, entails a serious risk of uh, social unrest, and social unrest usually means uh, political unrest. So this is within our countries, and it belongs to each country to organize its own uh, welfare, its own redistribution, its own fight against inequalities. But I also think that the COVID crisis has increased the North-South divide. For the first time since 50 years, there may be a risk that the growth of rich countries in the years to come will be higher than the growth of developing countries. And I'm not putting China in the low growth category. And this, I think, is something which we really need uh, to consider more seriously now than uh, before uh, the pandemic uh, COVID. Let me uh, conclude in a few words. Uh, if I'm right, that we have these challenges, we have these risks ahead of us, uh, the only conclusion is that uh, we need to do better together at addressing it. This is not a given. The world post-COVID is more divided, more difficult, more risky, more complex. East-West, North-South, uh, and I've mentioned this, uh, I think division uh, in a, a globalized and uh, interconnected uh, world uh, is like a sort of a poison. If we do not unite more across the world on these challenges, it will harm us uh, all. So let's try and uh, avoid this. Uh, let's try and find solution. Let's try and work together to address these gaps, including here in Guangzhou. Many thanks uh, for your attention.